Hello there, welcome back sa ating YouTube channel. This is RE Lawan Engineering and today we are going to talk about the introduction to reinforced concrete design. Okay, so bagong lahat, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, uh, leave a like, and leave a comment if in the end ay meron kang natutunan dito sa video natin. So una, pag-uusapan natin, what is a concrete or a reinforced concrete? Number two, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using a reinforced concrete sa design natin? Number three, different design codes. Number four, the properties of concrete. Number five, the steel reinforcement that we use in reinforcing our concrete. And number six, the introduction to our loads and load combinations. So, wag na natin patagalan and let's jump in. What is a concrete? So, ang concrete, ito ay mixture ng sand, gravel, uh, rock na crushed or aggregates. Yan. And these materials were held together by cement and water. Ngayon naman, kapag nilagyan mo na ito ng bakal, ang tawag na dyan ay reinforced concrete. So, a reinforced concrete is now a combination of concrete and steel, wherein the steel reinforcement provides the tensile strength. Okay, kasi nga, si concrete natin, mahina yung kanyang tensile strength. Para makompensate yon, lalagyan natin siya ng bakal. At pag nilagyan na natin yan ng bakal, ang tawag na dyan ay isang reinforced Concrete. Punta naman tayo sa advantages and disadvantages ng reinforced concrete natin as a structural material. Unang-una, ang maganda sa reinforced concrete ay yung kanyang compressive strength. Napakalakas. Okay? So that is good. Number two, yung reinforced concrete natin meron siyang great resistance to the actions of fire and water. So good tayo kay reinforced concrete. And also, the reinforced concrete is a very rigid structural material. So, okay na okay tayo dyan. And next, syempre, gusto natin na low maintenance yung ating material. So, in the long run, it is economical. Next is, our reinforced concrete has a very, very long service life. And that's what we want. Mahaba yung service life niya. And next is, it is usually the only economical material available for footings, floor slabs, basement walls, piers, and similar application. Okay, next. Punta naman tayo sa disadvantages ng isang reinforced concrete. Although the compressive strength of a reinforced concrete is very high, very low naman yung kanyang tensile strength. Diyan pumapasok yung steel reinforcements ng ating concrete. Next, forms are required. Okay, kasi nga, di ba, hinalo mo siya with cement and water. So, acts like a liquid. So, kailangan mo ng form to hold the concrete in place. Okay, it has a low strength per unit weight, also per unit of volume of concrete, which leads to heavy members. And next is, the properties of concrete vary widely. Kasi, dumedepende yan dun sa proportioning and mixing natin ng ating mga raw materials. Like the sand, gravel, cement, water. Next naman tayo. Design codes. What are the codes that we are using? We have the American Concrete Institute or the ACI. Okay, isa to sa basehan ng ating code sa Philippines na NSCP. Okay, we also have our IBC, the International Building Code. And we also have the AASHTO okay, or the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. Okay, next naman. We talk about the properties of concrete in accordance to our section 419 ng ating NSCP 2015. Okay, let us talk about this F'C. This is the compressive strength of a concrete. Okay, and it is determined uh, by testing uh, to failure yung 28-day-old natin uh, cylinder okay, para malaman kung ano yung compressive strength ng ating concrete. Okay, although concretes are available with 28 day ultimate strength from 2,500 PSI up to as high as 10,000 to 20,000 PSI. Most of the concretes use fall into the 3,000 to 7,000 PSI range. 
Tingnan naman natin ano yung sinasabi ng code natin no pagdating sa F prime C or the compressive strength of our um, concrete. So we have uh, limits na binibigay ng code natin. Ngayon, for general applications, the minimum F prime C that we're going to use is 17 megapascals. That is for normal weight and lightweight. Ngayon naman, kapag ang application natin ay special moment frames o magpupunta tayo dun sa SMRF na tinatawag natin, uh, whether you are using a normal or lightweight concrete, the minimum is 21 megapascals. Okay, so let us take note of that. Ito naman yung ating uh, conversion table. Kanina, tinignan natin, no? Nag-range from 3,000 to 7,000 PSI daw normally yung ating concrete. So, tingnan natin ito. Ito yung 3 KSI or the 3,000 PSI. And that is actually um, almost the 21 megapascal na binabanggit sa atin kanina ng ating code. Na minimum natin, when we are uh, applying the concrete as a um, material for our special moment resisting frames. Okay, let us take a look at this graph. We have here the stress here in our y-axis in KSI and sa x-axis natin, we have our strain. Ngayon, nag-test tayo ng iba't ibang compressive strength ng ating concrete. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 KSI. And base sa graph natin, no, nag-reach ng maximum yung any compressive strength natin at around 0 0.002 na strain. And before mag-fail yung ating concrete, marireach yung 0 0.003 na strain. Okay, this is the reason why the code uh, tells us that the maximum strain that we can use sa concrete ay 0 0.003 before mag-fail. Kasi pag lumagpas na siya dyan sa 0 0.003, the concrete will start to crush. Next tayo. Let us now talk the modulus of elasticity ng concrete natin. So, yung code may binibigay siya sa atin. We have here the formula for lightweight concretes. This is WC raised to 1.5 times 0 0.043 square root of F prime C. Okay, these are uh, for the weight of concrete between 1440 and 2560 kilogram per cubic meter. Pero kung tayo ay gumagamit ng uh, normal weight concrete, sa NSCP 2015, ang sabi na gagamitin natin na uh, modulus of elasticity ng concrete ay uh, 4700 times the square root of F prime C. So, ayan yung inaalaw ng code natin. Next, bakit ganon? Okay? Kasi, concrete has no clear cut pagdating sa modules of elasticity. Why? Because it will vary depende sa concrete strength, sa concrete age, sa type ng loading, sa characteristics and proportioning ng ating cement and aggregates. Unlike the steel, na yung modules of elasticity niya, fix na yun at 200,000 megapascal. Okay, so ano ba itong modules of elasticity na to? Sa elastic modulus, quantifies a material's resistance to non-permanent or elastic deformation. So, siya ngayon yung nagdidikta ng resistance ng ating concrete or ng isang material natin para hindi siya magkaroon ng permanente na deformation or nandulang siya sa elastic range. Na kung saan, kapag inalis mo yung load, babalik at babalik lang siya doon sa original niya na itsura. Okay, next. Na property. Pag-usapan naman natin ngayon yung FR or the modulus of rupture. Okay, the code tells us that we are going to use 0.62 lambda uh, times the square root of F prime C. Na kung saan yung lambda natin, dito natin titignan. That is the modification factor. For our lightweight, we are going to use 0.75. For normal weight, usually yan ang ginagamit natin, we will use 1.0. Okay, for lightweight concrete, titignan natin kung ano lagi yung sasabihin ng code sa atin pagdating sa value ng ating lambda. Okay? So, after that, steel reinforcement naman tayo. Okay? Uh, ito ay makikita natin sa section 420 ng NSCP 2015 natin. Okay? The reinforcing used for concrete structures may be in the form of bars or welded wire fabric. Okay? And itong reinforcing bars na to are referred to as plain or deform. Okay? So, ngayon, kilalanin natin yung ating steel. Pagbibili tayo ng steel, may mag 
kikita tayo mga markings dyan. At kailangan alam natin kung ano yan, no? So, yung main ribs natin, dyan natin makikita yung strength then okay? So, kung ilang ribs yan, malaman natin kung ano yung strength nung ating steel. Ngayon, itong letter symbol dito sa itaas, ayan yung company na gumawa ng ating reinforcing steel. So, sa baba naman yan, makikita natin yung bar size. And then, sa baba ng bar size, makita natin dyan yung type ng steel natin. Okay, so, eto yung listahan ng mga types ng ating steels. So, S for billet steel, baliktad na T, I should say, for rail steel, and so on. And then, dito naman sa baba, makikita natin yung grade mark. So, kung ano yung mark uh, ng grade natin. So, in this case, uh, 4 siya. So, this is a grade 420. Or kung di ako nagkakamali, uh, this is the 420 megapascal. Ngayon naman, punta tayo sa standard ng meron sa Philippines, the PNS, the Philippine National Standard. Okay, these are the grades that uh, available in the market. Okay, we have the grade 230, 275, 415. Ngayon, yung 415 na iyan, that is in megapascal. So, kung may makita ka na GR415, ibig sabihin, that is in grade 415 megapascal. So, kung naka-ASTM ka naman, A615, yan. Uh, ang equivalent naman yan, we have the grade 33, 40, 60, 75. Ngayon, pag nakita mo, grade uh, 60, ibig sabihin, your steel is 60 KSI. So, ganyan natin siya basahin. Okay, next. We have the bar size. Okay, so we have the nominal diameter. So, sa market, sa Philippines, we have the 10, 12, 16, 20, 25, 28, 32, 36, 40, and then 50 mm. So, ayan yung mga pwede natin gamitin. Okay, next naman. We have the commercial length. Okay, meron tayong 6 meters, 7.5, 9, 10.5, and then 12. Tapos meron tayong mga special length. Ito naman yung grades natin na pinag-usapan natin kanina. Um, in the Philippine National Standard Code, no, if you're going to use the 230 megapascal, uh, ang tawag nila dyan, the structural grade. Yan yung popular na tawag dyan. And the typical na application yan sa mga low-rise buildings or low-loading conditions. So, yung intermediate grade naman natin, usually that is the 275 megapascal, ginagamit yan kapag medium rise yung structure natin. And for the high tensile grade, the 415 megapascal, ayan na yung medium and high rise structures. So, yan na yung matataas. Okay, kasi kailangan natin ng mas malakas na bakal. So, yung kulay naman, okay, makikita nyo pag bibili kayo ng bakal, May mga kulay yan sa dulo. May indication din yan. Pag color white, that is 230 megapascal. Kapag uh, 275, that is yellow. Pag 415, that is color green. So next, introduction to loads. Ito yung mga load na dinadala ng structure natin or i-impose natin dun sa ating structure. So we have the dead loads. Yan, makikita natin yan no, sa section 204 ng ating NSCP. At meron yung table sa 204-2. So, dead loads are loads of constant magnitude that remain in one position. For example, the self-weight of the structure. That is a dead load. Okay. In contrast naman, meron din tayo nung tinatawag na live loads. Ang live load naman, makikita natin sa section 205. At meron din yung table sa code natin at table 205-1 and dash so, live loads are load that can change in magnitude and position. Okay, they include occupancy loads, warehouse materials, construction loads, overhead service cranes, and so on and so forth. And next, I have here a table na ko sa isang book from John McCormack. A list of different live loads na meron tayo. Okay, next, we have the environmental loads naman. Pag environmental, those are the loads coming from natural occurrences like snow, ice, rain, wind, and then seismic loads. Okay, yung wind and seismic, meron tayong provision yan for our, from our code. Next, we have the combination of loads that is in section 203 ng ating NSCP. So, these are the symbols. Here, we have the uh, different combinations available for our usage. 
Okay, ito ngayon ay under the USD o Ultimate Strength Design. Kung USD yung gagamitin na pag-design. And also, we have uh, the load combinations coming from ASD or the Allowable Stress Design. And then we have our special seismic load combinations for our earthquake. So... That's it. That is the introduction to our reinforced concrete design. If you're still here, still watching, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below if meron kang natutunan sa ating video today. So, until next time, bye!